Hello, uh, my name is Siddharth and today I am going to talk about ultrasound guided obturator nerve lock. Obturator nerve lock, it uh, derived from L2, L3 and L4 nerve root and uh, that's a part of lumbar plexus and uh, it descend on the medial side of Suvas muscle in the pelvis and through obturator foramina it exists the pelvis after a division of anterior and posterior after making two division anterior division and posterior division at this point before the division obturator nerves gives a articular branches to the hip joint now uh, two division in that the anterior division they lies in between the adductor longus and adductor brevis later on before these two muscle it actually it lies in between the obturator externals and pectineus muscle then infro medially it lies in between the adductor longus and adductor brevis and it gives a motor branches to the adductor longus adductor brevis and gracilis muscles it, it is sensory on the cutaneous branches of the medial medial aspect of the thigh but the sensory innervation is variable and uh, posterior division posterior division it lies in between the uh, the pectineus and the obturator external muscles and infrolaterally it lies in between the adductor brevis and adductor magnus muscle now this division is a motor to almost all the adductors like uh, uh, adductor brevis and adductor magnus and uh, it is it gives a sensory branches also to the to the articular branches of the knee joint see again the sensory innervation is variable so let's see over here see uh, the both the division they lies in between the pectineus and obturator external muscles and when we go infro laterally infro medially then this is red one is the anterior division and blue one is a posterior division they uh, the anterior division infro medially when we go distally it lies in between the pectineus and adductor brevis later on later on it it lies in between these three muscles in a y shape like adductor longus is above one medially pectineus and laterally the adductor brevis muscles and uh, far uh, or more distally it lies in between the adductor longus and brevis posterior division this is the anterior division see the pathway they lies in between these two muscle pectineus and obturator then pectineus and brevis then longus brevis and pectineus and then longus and brevis now coming to the posterior branch posterior branch is is lying uh, proximally in between the pectineus and obturator external muscles later on it lies in between the brevis and magnus throughout the course see so this anatomy is very important to block a particular division or the nerve this will help us okay now indications uh, obturator now is uh, basically indicated to prevent the adductor jerk or the obturator jerk that they does occur during the transurethral bladder resection surgeries it may be used to relieve the adductor spasticity specifically in hemiplegia or paraplegia and it gives additional analgesia in specifically in a knee surgery postoperatively and this uh, nerve lock is also employed uh, uh, during or after the uh, harvesting of the hamstring tendon for ACL reconstructions. It gives a very much a very good postoperative analgesia too. 
contraindication in that it is uh, basically skin sepsis and the patient refusal is mainly see this is the dermatom myotom uh, and the osteotom of the obturator now contraindication as we have already talked so a few more are like neuropathy lymphadenopathy and hematoma okay now uh, coming to the technique the first one there are different uh, way because uh, during the course obturator now and division they lies with uh, in between the different muscles and they go like from distal to medial they 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 apply intromedially uh, placement so so you can the first technique is that you can uh, block the nerve at the level of inguinal crease see in in that let's uh, let's first talk about the patient position in that mostly uh, the supine position and leg uh, remain externally rotated slightly and uh, slightly uh, abducted and uh, the high frequency linear probe is utilized over here uh, most commonly uh, in average labial patients and uh, in resolution plane of keeping depth up to 2 to 5 centimeter uh, uh, depth and uh, generally require a PNS or short wavel needle is 50 to 80 mm of uh, needle size length and uh, usually I do is in plane approach uh, more lateral to medial or many time I utilize medial uh, to lateral approach also uh, the local anesthetic volume that I use is is 5 ml for each division of of uh, obturator uh, no block the percentage that is half concentration will uh, will mainly do the work uh, mostly I use is lidocaine one to two percent and if it is the nerve itself is targeted not a division then I generally utilize 10 ml of half concentration lidocaine so uh, let's deal uh, of uh, the first approach is that it is at the level of inguinal crease and when we place the probe at this level the the first one the target structure is femoral vessels you have to identify the femoral vessels and uh, going medially to it you will find pectineous muscles and uh, to the lateral to it is the adductor longus brevis and magnus so uh, this approach is actually a uh, interfacial uh, nerve block approach in that the identification of nerve is not necessary if you are not utilizing PNS then you just instill the drug in between the interfacial plane and uh, your 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 block will definitely works if you are using PNS then you have to trace the hyper echoic band like structure and that you have to identify as a that that is the division of anterior and posterior div division of the obturator nerve and then you have to stimulate the those parts but if you are not utilizing pns then it is just an interfacial plane block and you just instill the required amount of uh, local anesthetic just to separate this two muscle layer and that will work so here the uh, the drug is given in between either in between pectineus or adductor brevis muscles or you can instill in between these three muscles like longus brevis and pectineus and uh, that will block the anterior division while the for posterior division you have to be in between the adductor brevis and magnus so this is first approach the second approach is somewhat distal to this one is that two to five centimeter uh, uh, distal to the inguinal crease and at this point actually you are uh, you are focusing on on the different uh, adductor muscles three adductor muscles and the, the ultrasound setting will be the same that is high frequency linear probe resolution mode tap 2 to 5 centimeter 50 to 80 mm of pns needle in train uh, needle from lateral to medial and local that is 5 ml to each division of half concentration of lidocaine see when we when we when we uh, 
put probe high, high frequency probe to at this area the main target is just we just have to trace first its femoral vessels then the pectinus muscle and then you will get three cells and uh, going slightly medially to it you will find the pectinus muscles three sequence of three muscles they lies uh, from anterior to posteriorly uh, you have to identify the three muscles and in between these three muscles uh, at two level you have to block the anterior one and posterior one respectively see this is somewhere here you will find the uh, femoral vessels and lateral to eight medial to eight is a pectinus this is pectinus muscle this is fasciata and the first one the superior one is a rectal longus muscle this is a rectal brevis muscles and this is the end of pectinus muscles and at this level you will find the the plane that is in between the brevis and magnus and below is the magnus muscle and in between these two muscle this facial plane is for anterior division this facial plane is for posterior division and many times you can visualize these nerves at this plane they look like hyperechoic band like structure and uh, uh, those are actually the anterior and posterior division of the obturator nerve so either you scan for this hyperechoic area or you just directly uh, place the local in between this facial plane and your flock will definitely work so this is the second approach in which you are actually injecting the drug for each division of the nerve just like the primary one the first one so these two approach are at a two two point injection 5 ml each the third approach is at the level of inguinal crease and in that the first and foremost important structure is pectinus see place the probe probe on the inguinal crease and identify the pectinus muscle first one thing is you have to identify the femoral vessels and uh, going slightly medially to it you will find the pectinus muscles at this point you have to tilt the probe 30 degree cranially so that you have to identify the second most structure that is superior pubic stamus okay the ultrasound settings are the same like high frequency linear probe resolution mode uh, depth is 2 to 5 centimeter 50 to 80 mm of pns needle in plane approach from lateral to medial and local that required is 10 ml of half concentration lidocaine because this is single point injection which will which will uh, take care of both the division at single point so let's let's see how it is now this is the first first uh, ultrasound screen in which when we put the probe over here the first most part this is facial atta and this is the pectinus muscles over here and this is longest brevis so this this is y shape and this must be anti division okay now this is the first first most part is you have to identify the pectinus muscle now tilt the probe at 30 degree cranially so that so that you will find out you have to find out the ramus okay superior pubis superior pubis ramus so this is pectinus tilt it and you will find this picture okay so here this is pectinus muscle and this is interfacial plane and somewhere here you'll find the obturator internal muscle so this this second one muscle and here is a superfluous ramus this is obturator externals pectinus muscles facial atta somewhere here we'll find the longest previous see and in between these two muscles this interfacial plane that you have to inject drug up to the 10 ml of concentration and this will this will take care of both division anterior and posterior division and uh, this is the end of uh, our third aspect this is based on the things that actually the after making a division this nerve uh, is lies on the obturator externus muscle see and the uh, above one is, is a pectinus muscle see this is pectinus muscle and this is obturator externus and this is brevis and in between this plane you are actually injecting the the local anesthetic drug in between this interfacial plane and this will take care of both division anti and posterior one so to sum up see as i have uh, earlier explained this uh, figure that 
these two approach Taha and uh, Anagno Topoli at all approach they, that is the more proximal ap approach in between the pectinus and obturator external muscles slightly distal is a Sinha at all approach in between pectinus and bravis is the anterior division and in between is bravis and magnus is the posterior division two needle two point injection is there while in this one single point injection is there again Fujiwara at all uh, has sold uh, has told uh, the Y shape injection or Y shape point this is in between these three muscles and posterior division is is the same in between Bravis and Magnus Sung at all it gives more intro medially approach and it is in between the longus and Bravis and in in between the Bravis and Magnus so these are the approaches of obturator nerve block through ultrasound this is the anterior division see how it go it uh, it scores on intromedially going from this from proximally to distally and this is the posterior one division okay so now the complication is uh, because of obturator artery is there you can it may be possible that you can puncture the vessels it can cause intravascular injection it can cause hematoma it can as local anesthetic systemic toxicity it can cause nerve damage like neuropathy is there intraneural injections a lot more but though they are rare but it can happen tips see if you want to block obturator nerve block for additional analgesia to a hip joint then uh, isolated obturator nerve block is not useful because any approach is not going to block these branches for that you, you require a lumbar plexus block because before division before entering into the pelvis it gives a branch of particular branch of obturator nerve okay now second thing is the obturator jerk is not apolized by spinal anesthesia and you should you must have to give a obturator nerve block selective obturator nerve block for obturator jerk or you have to administer the muscle relaxant that's all now the third one thing is because of the sensory distribution is variable it is very difficult to check the sensory block and the second one thing is motor is that because there is a co innervation of uh, femoral and sciatic nerve like the pectinus is supplied by the femoral nerve also and uh, adductor magnus is also supplied by sciatic nerve so because of co innervation you cannot sense the motor function also so at the end end result is uh, some sort of reduction in adduction strength is the only reliable means of demonstrating the motor blockage or the obturator nerve block see this is the sensory innervation see the different sensory innervation in uh, individual cases thank you